Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. Now the XBB sub variant has been on the headline lately. So what is XBB.1.5 and how worried should we be? So today let's have a quick summary and assessment of the XBB.1.5 sub variant which is dominating in the northeast region of the US and as well as gaining ground on a national level and has been detected in more than 28 countries. So let's get started. So what has changed or mutated in the XBB subvariant? XBB is still part of the Omicron family. It is a recombinant or fusion of two different BA2 Omicron subvariants, BA2.10.1.1 and BA2.10.1. 75. The original XBB was first reported in Singapore and has now further mutated into XBB.1.5, which is dominating the northeast regions of the US currently. This tree and mutation map shows how XBB relates to other major Omicron subvariants reported since early 2022. The primary mutation in XBB.1.5 spike protein is called S486P. This change in one amino acid on the receptor binding domain of the spike protein greatly enhanced its ability to bind to the human ACE2 receptor. This would explain its higher level of transmissibility. So how evasive is the XBB.1.5 subvariant? According to one of the first reports on antibody evasion properties of XBB published on December 13, 2022, the research team reported that XBB can evade all of the current monoclonal antibody therapies and can also greatly escape neutralizing antibodies from vaccinated, monovalent booster, bivalent booster, and those who recovered from BA.2 and BA.45 infection. Now, this study did not show that the earlier XBB binds better to human ACE2 receptors. However, the same research group posted an updated result on the XBB.1.5 binding ability on their Twitter account on December 27, 2022. This time, they showed the XBB.1.5's enhanced binding ability to human ACE2 receptor. A newer correspondent published on December 21, 2022 in the New England Journal of Medicine also investigated how neutralizing antibodies collected from boosted individuals work against the XBB. They showed that the BA5 bivalent booster neutralizing antibodies had better activity against XBB than those who were monovalently boosted, However, the tidal level against XBB was about six times less than against BA5. These antibody neutralization studies suggested the likelihood of infection or reinfection from the XBB.1.5 subvariant regardless of prior infection or vaccination history. However, more recent COVID recovery or booster individuals would likely have a lower risk from the XBB.1.5 variant. So how is the XBB.1.5 affecting the northeast region of the U.S. currently? Here we will use data collected from the New York State to show the initial real-world impact of the XBB.1.5. COVID cases in New York State have been trending up in all age groups since December 1st of last year, but most significantly in children less than 1 and people 75 and above. COVID hospitalization has had a sharp increase since the beginning of 2023. Again, children less than 1 and adults over 75 are affected most. All the other age groups remain relatively stable as of January 5th. Severe COVID illness is reflected in ICU admission. The adults over 75 are at the greatest risk in the face of the XBB.1.5. 65 to 74 is also trending up. All other age groups remain relatively stable. So what do all these data mean and how worried should we be? Since neutralizing antibodies are majorly responsible for stopping symptomatic COVID infections, the increase in COVID cases in all age groups reflects that XBB.1.5's antibody evasiveness in the population and it agrees with antibody titer study results. 
Fortunately, cellular immunity, we're talking about T-cell immunity against severe illness, which is reflected in ICU admission, is still holding up in the majority of the population, except in adults 75 and above. Now, this is not surprising because it is known that T-cell production and activation are weakened with increasing age. Have a quick summary and final assessment. The bottom line is that XBB is still within the Omicron family. Data suggests that more recently boosted or COVID recovered people have a lesser chance of XBB.1.5 infection, but do not expect natural and or vaccine induced immunity can offer a complete protection from infection at this point. Based on the results collected from the New York State, XBB.1.5 will likely cause more COVID infection cases in the coming weeks, but the current hospitalization trend suggests that adult less than 65 years old's immunity is holding up against severe illness. We should be concerned with the XBB.1.5 impact on the vulnerable population but not to be worrisome on a large scale. And the key focus would be to protect those who are more prone to severe disease and not strictly preventing all cases. Most importantly, I strongly believe everyone should respect how individuals choose to protect themselves with various methods. No matter what our personal beliefs are, we should refrain from being judgmental to our peers. That's all for this week's quick update, and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again in my next video. Meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. Bye.